Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can deploy a Ruby on Rails app to production using Kamal 2. And I'm going to be using Rails 7 because I've seen a lot of people asking how to use Rails 7 with Kamal 2 and how to deploy that onto a server and get everything working properly. And yeah, I'll tell you about things that you're going to need to get Kamal to work. So the first one is going to be Docker. You need to have Docker installed on your computer. And you also need to have Docker Hub, which is a website to store Docker images. Make sure that you have an account because we're going to need an API key. Now that I'm in here, uh, what we're going to do is go over to the settings, account settings. And then we can go to personal access tokens and then generate a new token. So I'm just going to call this YouTube deploy test. Pretty sure. You might as well give it read and write. I don't know if it needs to delete, but you could do delete if you want to. I'm just going to give it all of the privileges. Uh, we're going to use that in a second. So I'm just going to minimize this. Let's also make sure that we have Docker running. Cool. So now we have Docker connected. So we're good to go. Next, I'm going to go into my terminal and we can generate a simple Rails app. So I'm going to do that by typing the Rails new command and then I'll give it a name of the app. So I'm just going to call this quick deploy and for the options let's do tailwind for the css framework but that's it we're going to use the built-in database because it's easier to deploy i know a lot of you guys are probably going to be wanting to know how to use postgres or mysql so we're going to do that next but let's start off with a just a very simple rel 7 app which is going to be using the built-in sql i think it's sql where it uses it actually stores your database on the disk. Now that we're inside the app, we can start the server with bin slash dev and then go and view it at localhost 3000. As you can see, we have a simple Rails app. We have the Rails logo. So if we want to add a page, I'll go back in the terminal and I'm going to generate a new controller. I'll call this the pages controller and then I'll give it a home action. Cool. Now we can open up this in our code editor which I'm using VS Code. And then I'll go over to the config routes.rb and I'm going to actually delete this top line. Uh, that was just that default route and I'm gonna set it as the root. So it's gonna go to the pages and the home index or the home action. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is go over to the, uh, the next thing we're gonna do is go over to the views pages home and we can put in just some basic code for the home page i mean if we already reload we'll see that this is the home page as long as we have the server going so i'm going to restart that now let's go back to the browser and we'll see that this is the simple home page so i think i want to get something a little bit more nice than that actually i'm going to go into the layouts application i'm going to delete that container real quick i just don't like the styling that that adds and then we could go in the home and add any sort of code that we want. So I want to keep this simple. So I'll just look up a free Tailwind CSS component. Uh, this is a good website. We can look for a landing page. There's probably tons of different options. This one's not bad right here. Let's see if we can get something cooler. Okay, I like this one. Uh, let's click show code. Actually, we can just copy the code. I'll paste that in, and this is what we get now. Let's load. All right, yeah, it totally does work. And it looks pretty good. I like it has the parallax effect. Uh, we could also set up device real quick and add in user login, so we can make sure that that works, because that's a pretty basic feature. I'm going to add the device gem, and I'll also add the Tailwind device gem. So now that we have that added, I'm going to run royalg device colon install. Then we'll also do Rails G Tailwind underscore device colon views. And lastly, we'll do Rails G device user model. And then let's migrate to the database. And just like that, we will have user accounts. I can now start the server. Uh, we can go back. Nothing's really changed. So I'm going to go and edit these links to make them go to the actual sign in page. So I can go to the home and let's find out where those links are. Right here, this is the register link. There's not even an href on it right now. I can set href 
and then do some embedded Ruby and set this to the new user registration path, which is the route that was defined by device. I'll just copy this, put it on the login, except for I'll change it from the registration path to the session path. We can log in and register. So if we go back to the browser and try to click on these links, it now works pretty well. And if we wanted that nav bar to stick, like to actually stay in the right spot, I could take this header, I could extract this and put it inside of a partial. You can go to a layouts application and I'm gonna render layout slash navbar. And then I'm gonna create a new file called underscore navbar to HTML to B. Drop it into this header code. And we should have a navbar at the top, perfect. And if we go to the login, the navbar is still there. We can go to register. This is already really cool. I'll quickly sign up to make sure that this works. Boom, we signed in. Although I don't really see any difference. So what I'll do is I'll quickly add in a new page for when a user signed in. So to add in a different page for when the user is signed in, we just need another action kind of. So I'll go to the controllers folder in the pages controller. You call it the dashboard. That's usually what I do. So you have like a dashboard that you go to after you've signed in as a user. So now I'm going to go back to the config routes RB and I'm going to edit the routes to add a new route for when the user signed in. Now there's a method that's built into device. So we can actually say authenticated user do. And then inside of it, we can change the root. We'll say root to pages and the pound sign, send it to the dashboard action. And we also have to change the name so that it doesn't conflict with the original root path. So I'll call this authenticated user root. And just like that, we have a new path for when a user signed in. So if we reload, now we'll see actually an error because we're missing the dashboard template. So we need to go to the views and create a matching dashboard template inside the pages folder. So I'm gonna create a new file called dashboard.html.erb. And we can put some code for the dashboard. So there's probably a component for dashboard too. If I just look that up. Sweet. <laughs> the first thing I see is like a pretty nice looking dashboard. So I'm gonna copy that, paste it in here, and boom. We already have this nice looking app, although we still have the uh, nav bar, which is kind of conflicting. Looks like it's just the sidebar thing that's kind of having an issue. So I guess it's this one. So it says fixed. If I add a top 10, it should push it down a little bit. There we go, it's already looking a little bit better. I'm gonna do top 16 and boom, pushed it all the way down. And we can also hide these register login links once you're already signed in. So I'm gonna go back to the nav bar, wrap this like if not current user. So there's no more login links. This is pretty good. Though we, pro we probably want a log out link. So let me do if current user and then I'll do else. We just need a log out. So maybe I'll copy the same thing. I'm gonna say log out. And this, instead of going to new, it's gonna go to destroy user session path. And I'm also gonna set a data turbo method equal to delete and to test that log out button. It does actually work. So now that we have this simple app set up, let's get into deploying it to a server. And we're gonna do that using Kamal. So first of all, you should make sure that you have Kamal installed on your computer. You can do that by running a gem install Kamal. And as you can see, we got the latest version, Kamal 2.2.2. Now that we have that, we can run Kamal init, which is going to set up the things that we need to use Kamal to deploy our app. Now let's go back into the code and close out of these files and then go over to the config deploy.yml. So here's where we're going to set up the layout for our whole app. So I'm gonna run through here real quick and uh, explain each part. So the first is the service. The service is gonna be the name of your app. You can just call this anything that you want, uh, but if they're gonna use it to name the containers. I can just say like, quick deploy 
YouTube. And then we're going to put the name of the image, which is going to be your username slash the name of the container. So we probably want to use the same one as the service. I don't really know if that's required, but I usually just copy this, paste it there. Now for my user, it needs to be your username, which is the username for Docker Hub. So as you can see, uh, whatever your username is going to be, you can click up here and see what it is. My one is right here. I'm going to put that in. Uh, the next thing is the server. So this would be the IP address of the server that you're deploying to. Uh, so we don't have that yet. We're going to need to create that server. I'm actually going to use Azure for this video because I have a lot of credits for Azure. And I've already deployed apps to it, so I'm pretty familiar with it. All right, so now that we're in the Azure dashboard, I'm gonna click create a resource, and then I'm gonna go to virtual machine, press create, and we're going to go through the quick process of creating a virtual machine. So I'm gonna put the name, which is just gonna be quick deploy. Uh, then you can choose like whatever zone you wanna be in. I'm just gonna leave it as a default. Uh, then for the image, I think the default is Ubuntu Server 24.04. That is the one that I want to use. So I'll leave that. I'll leave this x64. And then for the size, this is going to be actually the size of your machine. I think the cheapest one is usually the B series. That's the one that I'm using for $9 a month. Now, I don't know what it's going to be on your machine. So if, if it's different and you're looking for the cheapest Azure server, this is going to be it, the B1S. You can probably find it and then click on that. Azure is kind of annoying. I just want to go back. Okay, here we go. We're back. The next thing is going to be setting the SSH key. So you can set the username here that you're going to log in as. So by default, it's like Azure user. We might want to change that to something different. So I'm just going to put it as Indigo. Then there's the SSH key. So you have the option to generate a new key pair. That's what I'm gonna do. And then you can put the name of the key. So I'm just gonna change this to all underscores to make that a little bit easier. Okay, the last part is actually pretty important. So uh, you can select the ports that have access and by default, it's only SSH access, which means it's blocking requests for the web. So if you were trying to deploy a Kamal app without checking these, it would not work you need to allow requests to these two ports, 443 and 80. So now that we have that set up, we can press review and create. And this should go through the quick initialization step uh, and set up the machine. This looks good, press create. Now it's gonna pop up this modal to generate the new key pair. So press download private key and it's gonna download the key to your machine. And then it's gonna deploy the app. Cool, so let's let that do that. And what I'm gonna do is, so since I'm on Windows, it actually downloaded the key to my downloads folder, but I wanna bring it over to my Ubuntu machine. So I can, the cool thing is on the left side of this file explorer, I can see where my Ubuntu machine is. And I'll go over to home, and then the indigo folder, and I'll just paste it right here. So now it's gonna be available in the root. Uh, what we can do is go into deploy.yml, and once that server is booted up, we can set the IP address. But for now, let's put in the key. So I'm actually gonna add in a new section called SSH, and then we're going to set the user. We can put the username that we provided for the machine, which I put indigo, Then we're gonna put keys, and we're gonna pass in an array of keys. So I'm gonna use this quick deploy key, which is in the root path. So you can access that with tilde slash, and this should work. Now I'll also quickly delete all these comments. Another thing is the proxy. So you do this if you wanna have a domain, if you wanna like use a domain, but we don't have a domain per se right now. So I'm gonna comment that out and we can always add that in later. So actually I'll leave this comment maybe at the bottom because that's something that we might use. So Kamal by default uses Docker Hub as the registry. Now it's possible to use a different registry, but for this video, I'm gonna use Docker Hub. That's what I've been using personally. 
and it works pretty well. So you can set the username for Docker Hub right here. I'm just gonna put in the same username and then the password will be a credential that we will pass in. This looks pretty good and for everything else, I'm just gonna kind of delete this. Oh, actually that part is important, the ENV. And grab that because we're going to want to pass the master key into our app when we're deploying it and possibly we might want to put clear credentials but that's different these are credentials that aren't secret that you don't care if people are going to see the secret credential needs to be passed in through the secrets file which i'll talk more about that in a second so it's over here in the dot kamal folder there's a new secrets file this is how you pass in the env key so it's a little bit different than the other version of kamal and it is different if you're used to the rails environment where you set the credentials in a dot env file that doesn't work here so actually you can you have a few options though you can read secrets from the environment by using the dollar sign and pulling it out from the environment but this requires you to export or have the environment variable set when you're running kamal deploy so that's usually what I do. We can put the Rails master key. We can set that here. Just like this with the dollar sign, we can grab it from the environment. And then when we go to actually run the command, we can either export those credentials onto the environment or we can just set them in line. I think it'll both work. All right, so if we go back to Azure, it looks like our deployment is complete. So I'm gonna click go to resource, and I'm gonna look for the public IP address, which is right here. I'll copy that to the clipboard. And then we can go back into our code, go over to the deploy.yml, and we'll set that for the web address that we're targeting. So already this should work because we have the correct user, we have the key, which is located to the right path. Oh, but there is one thing I forgot. Uh, we might actually just wanna run it though, just in case you guys get the same problem, but this key, cannot have permission like so you need to give it a certain permission so that no other users can like read it it's kind of like some operating level uh, write permission on the file so why don't we try to do it first and then once the error pops up i'll show you how to fix that all right but i think this looks good to me i think we're ready to deploy so now i'll go over to the terminal and we can run kamal setup but but we need to set the credentials first, like I, like I said before. So we need to first set Kamal registry password. So what I'll do is I'll set this, I'll try to set this in line and see if that works. So we're gonna need our token from the Docker Hub website. It might be helpful to store these locally too. So you can actually create a .env file, which is not tracked by Git. And then you could put it in, make sure to put it in a uh, with a comment so that it doesn't actually run when you do bin slash dev or when you start your rail server. But you could store this temporarily here. Also make sure that there's no typos. It's happened to me before. But you could store it just so it's a little bit easier. And then when, whenever you go to run this command, you could kind of like copy paste it in. We also want to set rails master key. We're going to set that to the production credential key or you could just set it to the master key we haven't generated that yet so to generate that you have to run forgot about this you have to run rails credentials edit so what i'm going to do is i'm going to generate a production key to do that i'm going to set an editor i'll set this to vim and then we can run rails credentials edit and i'll pass in dash dash environment equals production you just have to run that one time. Uh, there is a secret key base inside, so that's pretty important. We can right quit. And the new things that it added is it created the production key and it also created well this credentials folder and and then this is the encrypted credential. So any sort of keys that you want to have in your app, you probably want to store inside of the credentials file. Let's go over to the production key. I'm gonna copy that and paste it right here. So this would be our helper. Whenever we run Kamal commands, we can just paste this in first. So let's go ahead and do that. Although that brings me to another thing 
Uh, Kamal only will pick up committed changes with Git. So that means whenever you're making a new push, or like you're trying to push the server, you need to make sure all your files are committed. So right now, all like we haven't made a single commit, so we need to do that. So I'm pretty sure you have to run git init to init the repository, although it looked like it was already initialized. And we could do git add dot. And let's do a commit. So we're going to say first commit. Now everything is committed. So if you do git status, see there's nothing to commit. Now the reason why that's helpful is so that I guess like if you're if you have some committed changes, that's usually the stuff that you're happy with and that you want to deploy to production. It's kind of like a little safeguard against files that you haven't committed yet. So that's cool. So just make sure that you have all your files committed before you make the pushes because that does make a big difference. So now that we're ready to, now I think we're ready to, to run the first Kamal command, which is going to be Kamal setup. So what I'll do is I'll drop in these environment variables and I'll write Kamal setup and then just press enter and try to run this and see what happens. So I think the first thing it's going to do is it's going to run Docker locally and create a container image for your app. Uh, and that is inside a Docker file. This is generated by Rails. And oh, we are going to have to change something here. Actually, we're going to use Thruster uh, to help to help create the proxy for deploying our app. That's something that we're going to have to add in a second. But let's just try out this first setup and see if there's any errors. So yeah, right now it's still just building the Docker image locally. It's going to go through and kind of like create everything inside this Docker file. It's going to do all this stuff, which is like installing dependencies and everything. So you have to give that some time. Okay, perfect. We got our first error, the permission for the Docker daemon socket. It's even mentioned in the Kamal docs, but because we're not using a root user, when you're when you install Docker initially, uh, all the other users on the system don't have permission to use that the Docker socket. That's all it is. So what we have to do is we have to SSH into the Azure machine manually and give it permission. So I'm going to quickly go to the Kamal deploy docs and pull up the configurations SSH section. It mentions it right at the top in the SSH configuration where we have to set this user mod and give permission to the user. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly SSH into the Azure server. It's pretty easy to do as long as we know the user account, the path to the key, and the IP address. Let's go ahead and run this real quick. I'm going to run SSH-I and we're going to need the path to the key. So I'm going to pull that up from the deploy.yml. We'll just grab this path right here, drop that in. Now we can do indigo, which is the username, at the IP address. I'm going to grab this IP address, paste it in, press enter, and we got the permission denied. So this is what I was trying to tell you about. Uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward, though. It just tells you it's required that your private keys files are not accessible by others. So we have to fix the permissions on that file. The easiest way to do that is to just run chmod 400 and then path in, pass in the file path. Actually, I think it needs to be without a string. chmod 400 on the path, and now we should be good to go. So we can rerun the SSH command. And boom, now we're inside of our machine. I'm going to try to do a Docker PS and you'll see we get a permission denied. So we can't run any Docker commands as the Indigo user because we're not root. So that's really where the error comes from, but we can fix it by running this command here. And I'm actually going to use the user variable, which is just the same thing as saying Indigo because it's going to pull up the username from over here. But you can run that and you now have permission, although we're going to have to reload 
for that to take effect. So what I'll do is I'll just exit out and yeah, I think just like that. Uh, let's try to rerun Kamal setup. And the cool thing about Kamal and using Docker is now it's actually cached that whole image. So that process of building the Docker image was way faster this time, which means the deploys are are way faster once you've once you've already done the initial build. Like you can deploy your apps in a matter of seconds, even with new changes. It's pretty insane. So right here, it's actually pulling the image on the remote server. So you can tell which server it is because it says on, and that's the IP address. So it's actually running all these commands on the server. The last thing it's going to try to do is it's going to try to start the server. And if that could either fail or work, but the thing is it has a timeout of 30 seconds. So you won't actually know until 30 seconds later. So that can be kind of frustrating. So you kind of have to just like wait and it's going to say that there was some sort of problem with the server, but I already know, basically I know where the problem's coming from. Oh, actually that was a little bit of a different error. So we got no database file specified, missing argument database. Uh, so I think I'm missing something because, well, let's go over to the database.yml. Oh, there's no database path on production because if you're deploying, and there's basically some comments that try to explain, like every time you deploy your app, this file gets rewritten. Yeah, this guy did a really great tutorial earlier this year. So I'm going to pull up, I'm going to take inspiration from him. So it looks like he created a folder on the virtual, on the virtual machine and then used that for storing the database and also for storing the files with active storage. So that's probably what I'm going to do too. So let's SSH back into the server and make those directories. So we can make their for storage and then we can make their for DB. We can do the permissions that and we can look inside of this dude's code and what I'm going to mostly take is just the volumes volumes is an option which allows you to mount so somehow this does work because I've deployed another app and you know the database has persisted and I'm sure if you're using active storage those images and whatever files would persist also so now that we have that Let's go back out of here. Oh, you know what? The last step is going to be adding Thruster, which is going to set up the proxy to help our app accept requests. So that's kind of the last step, which requires us editing the Docker file. So we can go in here, expose 80. And we're also going to come in here and add dot slash bin threat slash thrust. We don't have Thruster yet. I'm going to run bundle add thruster is going to add the thruster gem to our app. And then I'm going to run bundle bin stubs thruster to generate the bin stubs. So now we can access it with dot slash bin slash thrust. Another thing that you probably want to update is the entry point. So this is in C bin slash docker slash dash entry point. So if we come in here, the command has kind of different it's different now because the positions are different. So see, they're checking like, <laughs> I don't even know why they're checking this, but it's different because now we have three options instead of two. So we kind of have to like change up the code a little bit. Instead of asking about the first one, I think we just do like two, two, three. That should probably work. All right, so now that we got Thruster, we're probably gonna need to commit again. If we do git status, you'll see we have a lot of different changes. I'm just gonna go ahead and do a git add dot, and then a git commit updates to Docker and add Thruster. Commit that, and then let's go ahead and I'm gonna press the up key until I get back to that command. And I think now that we've already done the initial setup, Instead of doing setup, we can run deploy. Although, 
Yeah, I think that should work. Let's see what happens. It's going to basically do the same step. It's going to run through, create the image again. But it's also going to cache a lot of stuff to make it faster. Uh, let's let this do its thing. And hopefully there's no errors. Hopefully we get this going the first time. All right, so we got to the end, and it looks like there was an error. I'm going to try to debug, figure out what went wrong. I honestly don't see anything that's bad here. The only thing is, like, the request is not working. I think I have an idea why that is. So I'm going to go over to the config environments production.rb. I'm pretty sure, yep, down here, uh, in Rails 7, they started adding force SSL. So I'm actually going to comment this out uh, because it's it was requiring SSL connection, which obviously if you have an IP address and no domain, you can't do SSL. It's going to only be HTTP, so not HTTPS. So I'm going to fix that. We're going to need to commit that change. I'm going to remove force SSL. And then let's rerun that command deploy command. And hopefully this time we will have a working server. Hey, we actually got it done without any errors. Everything was successful, which leads me to believe that our app has successfully been deployed. So let's go ahead and test it out by doing HTTP dot slash slash, and then putting your IP address. Let's press enter and congratulations. You have just deployed your first app with Kamal to a server, which is pretty amazing. Like, look at this, this is all working. So now let's test if user accounts work. Let's go and sign up. Click that sign up button. And we've logged into our server on the production app. All right, this is actually incredible. Can't believe we got this going. And there weren't really that many errors. All of the things that we encountered, I was already familiar with from my previous deploys, which made this a lot easier. So I hope I was able to help you out if you're struggling with deploying your apps with Kamal. Hopefully you were able to see that it is possible. You can get it working. And it's a really awesome feeling once you do have it working. Because whenever you make your next change, it's just that easy. You can run that Kamal deploy command again and the code will get updated on the server. It handles everything from, like it, it basically, it leaves the old code until the new code, until the new code is finished, and then it switches the server over. So it's like seamless. You don't even, the users wouldn't even notice a difference when you're deploying. So it has stuff like that, which even Heroku didn't have, like a lot of other services didn't have. So it's pretty incredible what you can do with Kamal. Now I want to quickly show how you can get this working with a real domain because I know a lot of you guys are going to want to do that next once you've had the IP address working. So I'm going to go over to GoDaddy, which is where I have a lot of my domains. I'm going to go over here and try to find a domain that I'm not using right now, which is really a lot of them. Uh, let's go ahead and do this one. So I'm going to go in here. We already have this domain name purchased. So to get this working with our app, it's pretty simple. All we have to do is let's first of all, make sure that the name servers are on the default name servers. Okay, cool. Because if you're using DigitalOcean, it might've had the DigitalOcean name servers. Then let's go over to the DNS records and we're going to delete this C name because it's using www and I'm going to use an a with www. All right, now we can edit the a with the name of at and we can set the value to our IP address. So we can get that by going over to Azure. Or actually, you can just get it from really anywhere at this point. We could go to the deploy config deploy.yml, grab that IP address, head back over here, set this as the value. And we're going to press save. Then I'm going to add another record, type A, and it's going to be the name is www, and the value is the same IP address. Just like that, we have now forwarded this domain, or we've set up the DNS to go to our server. 
Now I'm going to copy the domain name. I'll go out of here. Let's go back into our config deploy.yml. And I'm going to uncomment the proxy option now. So we can set SSL true. And then we can set the host to our domain name. Then I'll come back into the code. And we'll want to add and commit that new change. We've set domain name. And then we'll go ahead and run the Kamal deploy command again. All right, awesome. We got another successful deploy. I'm going to go ahead and test out this domain. Click enter. All right, so it looks like uh, we did get an error. I'm wondering if anything went wrong with the server. Now we can easily check the logs for our app by running Kamal app logs. This will pull out all of our live logs from the app. It looks like we didn't even get a request. Uh, it's possible sometimes when you're setting the DNS settings on GoDaddy, it could actually take a second for it to load. It looks like right now the request isn't working, but possibly if we come back, if we make a request in like 30 minutes, it probably would work. But if we can also just go back to the domain or to the IP. Copy this IP address. Um, interesting. <laughs> so now we get a not found for the IP address. I'm going to run Kamal app logs. We can also run Kamal proxy logs, which will actually tell you if. Oh, look at this. It looks like there is a handshake error because we're missing a certificate. Mm. Oh, actually, we might just want to do Kamal proxy reboot. I've heard that that is helpful. Maybe like when you <clears throat> when you update stuff about your proxy, you want to restart it. Okay, we got an error dash p that's interesting oh i think it needs the registry password so when whenever we're running this we probably need to have this credential set so i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna run kamal proxy reboot with these credentials passed in let's go ahead and run it looks like it's working now they said there could be a slight outage for a second. Hopefully it's back on now. Alright, I'm going to try to go to either of these. What was it? Oldshorts.com Press enter. Oh, and it works! We have SSL and everything. So I think the reboot did help. Just like that, we have our app deployed to our own domain. We can log in, everything works. Let's make sure that we can log into that other account, by the way. Because that would mean that the database was saved between pushes. Yep, I'm able to log into my other account. Boom, this is already working very well. Hope you guys found this interesting. If you did, please like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment.